in the previous part, we painted a leg. I have since painted the rest of the parts in the same style. I've also done a few of the little details, purity seals, little screens and buttons, etc. That stuff I'm not covering in this tutorial. There's plenty of videos out there on how to do it. Most of the case, it's just, yeah, put a little bit of the spot color on it, job done. I've also painted up the rest of the model. Again, this is the same techniques as part one. If you want to know how to paint these flames, Darren Latham has a great video tutorial on how to paint flames. Um, my advice is paint the flame bit first, paint the brazier bit second. It's just a bit easier that way. Um, I ended up taking like three or four different stabs at these in order to get them to look right, so don't worry about it if yours take a few tries. In this part, I'm going to be painting the pilot. I've got the pilot glued together so that I can do it with the airbrush. Um, obviously, it comes in two halves and some arms on this particular version. Don't know how they work on the multi part kit, but they're not out yet. We've got this, which, near as I can tell, is um, injection plungers, fluid, and glass containers, little pipes that all run through into the dude, presumably horrible drugs to keep him alive long enough for his, uh, him to witness his own grisly death. Now, I'm going to paint all of this section after painting the guy. And I've already tried to paint this guy a couple of times, and he's been stripped and repainted in order to try and prepare for this. And the first few times I did it, I painted this section first, um, and it made painting this bit much harder. Um, so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this part second, and the reason for that is this part is much more separate and easier to paint without getting any paint on this guy than this guy is without getting any paint on this bit. Especially since I'm going to be using the airbrush for quite a bit of this guy, not to speed things up a bit. So, with that said, I've got him primed black, I've got him attached to a bit of a base. This is just blue tack that it happens to be pink. I get asked that all the time. It's just blue tack that's pink. I'm using Mechanica Standard Grey. This is the air paint, which I'm going to thin down a little bit. So, four drops of paint, and I've got some water over there. I'm just going to put one, two drops of water in, and then give that a thorough mix with an old brush. So it should be getting behavior like that. This is Dawnstone. Okay, so I'm just going to try and shoot this from above in general, but I'm also going to try and focus around his knees a little bit because they're a little bit bent and I just want to pick up the detail on those. Again, just using short bursts here. So I'm kind of holding it like that so that I'm shooting down and I'm looking down the model. So we are already starting to get the transitions going. So that's the Dawnstone. No, I'm not going around the sides or the back. I'm going to keep that in shadow. I'm only going to be highlighting the front, which is where the focus of, of the model is. Now we're on to Administratum Grey. And you want to thin this down a little bit more. 
just so that you've got more control over it and you don't get too much speckling in the blends. So I'm using my thumb. Here. I can feel where the air is. So I know that I'm aiming it just there. And doing something like this, you want to rock back and forth on the trigger very gently. So that you're alternating air and paint, which means that the uh, paint that's hitting the model, which is quite wet because we thinned it down a lot, gets dried and doesn't spider out too much. And that's basically it for our pants. Okay, for the flesh tone, I'm going to be starting with Rack Off Flesh. Um, I don't have the air version of this, I only have the base color version of this, so I'll be adding quite a lot of water to this in order to thin it down. So, working from the pot like this with GW Paints, I just scoop some up on my brush, put it in the cup, add some water, so in this case, six or seven drops and the thinner is better as long as you've got the trigger control to keep control of it that's looking good okay so if we look at my hand here That's the kind of control you want over the paint and the kind of transparency. So, just using my thumb to kind of ad hoc marks, mask off the upper torso. Now, if you want to mask this off fully, then I recommend you can either use blue tack and stick it on your skin a few times not to get rid of the tackiness, or silly putty. In this case, this is actually it was quite hard to get in the UK for a good long while for some reason. Eh. But they finally, you can get it again under the brand Mystery Putty. Uh, unfortunately, it comes in five different colours, one of which has glitter in. You don't want that one. And you don't know which one you're going to get until you open the egg. So. <laughs> but this makes great masking material. Um, it does tend to expand a little bit after you've applied it. So just thin yourself out there, the area of the mask. And then you can just, it conforms really nicely. Right, I'm just going to cover the hands with it as well. Just going to make it a little bit easier. But if you don't have this, you saw me using my thumb, it's not particularly hard. Or you can just use very control first, or you can do a space coat with a brush, because we're not going to worry about Zenithal for this that much. So, Drucci Violet. I'm going to thin this down a little bit with some water. But I am just pretty much going to pour this into my cup. Not very much. Won't need very much. And I'm going to add a couple of drops of water to this just to thin it down a little bit. And give it a good old stir. So I'm just going to spray this from 
I'm just going to spray this from underneath to try and give us a little bit of a shadow color. So I can feel that against my, fin my index finger. I'm just spreading up until I start to get something coming through. There we go. Just focusing a little bit on the underside of his ribs there. And it's relatively subtle, but it's coming through. And so we have something that looks a little bit like that. You don't want to push it too far, otherwise the contrast will get too high. And it won't look like skin anymore. But the great thing about these, uh, running these washes through an airbrush is that they're so translucent that you can build up the gradient really, really gently with very little speckling. You've just got to take your time with it. Next up, I'm going to use a little bit of flayed one flesh uh, thinned down quite a lot. In my airbrush, I'm just going to reapply a little highlight over the shoulders, top of the chest, and a little bit on the feet. Yep, yeah, that's pretty good. You can barely see it, which is exactly what we want. And again, from above, we're just going to target tops of the shoulders, tops of the chest, tops of the feet, and anything that oversprays should be a little bonus. But just be very gentle on the trigger, pull back only slightly. Again, I'm using this index finger to figure out where my error is. I'm using that as a reference point to aim. So the next step would be all brush work, but it's actually not. I need to do a coat of satin varnish over this, and that's just to protect what I've done against, say, the lifting properties of any washes that might occur on there. Um, what I've got here is some Winsor Newton Galleria satin varnish. Give it a really, really good shake. This stuff is really cheap by the uh, milliliter, far cheaper than hobby brands, and it's exactly the same kind of stuff. So we're using satin because we want it to have just the regular finish that Games Workshop paints have. And I've just got it in my airbrush. Neat. It does go through. You may need to turn your PSI up a little bit. And I'm just going to give this coat of satin varnish and let it dry for a few hours. So that when I apply any additional paints or washes or water to the surface of this, it doesn't lift up the paint from the airbrush. Uh, varnish coat is dry completely. It's been several hours now since I did that. Now I'm going to be using some Raglan Flesh Shade. I'm just going to be thinning this down and applying it into some of the recesses. So I'm just focusing in areas that are kind of shallow recesses. in the ribs and around all the scarring and it'll be very subtle at first but over a few layers will build up
Okay, I'll come back once that's all dry. Maybe do another coat. And we'll move on to highlighting. Okay, so all of those washes are dry now. I'm actually going to apply a little bit of a normal oil wash over the trousers before moving on. Just straight from the pot. This is just to give it a little bit more uh, shade as the overspray from the skin will have reduced some of that a little bit. I'm going to wash it all over, doing one leg at a time, and then clean my brush, and then just kind of feather it out on tops of the knees. Okay, so um, all I've done off camera is I've filled this gap here with some uh, matte varnish. Just take some matte varnish, such as ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo, this, again, gallery of matte varnish, and just run it into the gap, let it dry, and the um, matte varnish will actually, over a few layers, just run into that gap and fill it quite nicely. It's really good for when you're doing something in sub-assemblies. Um, and or if you've forgotten to fill a gap during assembly, such as I did. And then you can just, once it's dry, you can just paint over it and all I've done is just blend it in some Rakarth flesh mixed with a little bit of the white clump flesh shade in order to blend in the gap that was in his uh, stomach there. So you can't see it quite so much now. It's still there a little bit, but I'm not really planning on like entering this into any competitions, so it's not a big deal for me. What we're going to do now is I've got some Rakarth flesh, I've got some Flave 1 flesh on my palette, um, and I'm just going to start glazing that over some areas in order to bring some highlights and a bit more contrast to the model. So I'm going to be focusing on areas where we want the bones to be visible. So this guy is completely emaciated, starved, as you would expect for someone uh, who is accused of heresy and been strapped to a giant machine in order to die. Um, so we need to pick out his ribs a little bit along the top edge of the ribs and give them a little bit of a highlight so they just stand out a little bit more. So we'll also want to pick out um, his hip bones. Um, a little bit on his hand. We don't need to do that much on his hands because the wash and the airbrushing has actually picked out his hands pretty well. Um, his nipples, obviously. Do some highlighting on the face. The tops of the shoulders didn't take to the wash particularly well. So we're going to have to smooth those out. Same with his elbows. And a little bit on his feet, but we're not that bothered about his feet. Because they're all the way down there, and they've actually turned up pretty good from just the wash alone. And once I've done that, I'm going to go on to painting the scars on his body. Now, the scars typically wouldn't be... Um, just like a highlighted color of the flesh tone, which is how a lot of people paint scars. They're usually a lot pinker, especially if they're fresh scars or if they've not been allowed to heal properly. But in this particular instance, we're gonna be using that to just slightly pinkify all of the scars, which I'm gonna be doing that just by mixing some screen pink in with some flavor one flesh. And while I'm here, I'm also gonna apply a few glazes over the trousers in order to smooth out the blends on there. And that's pretty much all we're doing with the paintbrush on the flesh areas of this model. So I'm going to start off with some Rakarth flesh mixed with a little bit of flayed one flesh and a little bit of water. Just thin that down. And that's surprisingly close to my own flesh tone. That wasn't on purpose. I'm just going to start off by carefully highlighting the tops of the ribs. And since this is quite a thin glaze, it'll take a few layers to really be noticeable. And don't go too heavy on it to start. We just want 
quite a subtle highlight and it'll look darker after you first apply it. Oopsie. It'll look more opaque while the water is in it. And as the water evaporates, it will go more translucent. So you can see we've got a little bit more contrast going on with his ribs there. And I'm just going to pick out his hip bone as well. This basically equates to anywhere where the skin is essentially the thinnest. I want it to be the lightest. So I'm not really highlighting because of the light, so much as we're highlighting because of how tight the skin's been pulled. Now this guy, it's, got, it's been pulled pretty tight because it's uh, starving. So that's actually pretty much enough, really. Like I said, don't need very much in order to really pick the pull them out. A little bit more on that corner of the hip bone. It will appear very subtle, but ultimately, compare this side, which I haven't done. If you look at the ribs, in particular, you can see how much they stand out on this side in comparison. And the shoulder is just less messy. Okay. So I've done both sides now. I'm going to go to work on the face. And for that, again, starting off with the same mix as before. Not quite as much water because I'm mostly going to be using the side of the brush to pick out areas like the chin and the ears and the nose. And it's very subtle. <clears throat> but it's better to start off subtle and build it up than it is to uh, have to try and knock it back down again. I'm just going to use a little bit of thinned down played one flesh. I've still got some Michael and Flesh Shade on my palette. I'm just going to use a little bit of that. I'm just going to kind of try to 
drop it in between this ridge on the chin and his lower lip. And a little bit under his jaw on his neck. Okay, next step is going to be painting the inside of his mouth, painting his lips. Well, lip, you can only really see one of them. Painting his teeth. And that's pretty much it. I'm just going to do a quick glaze of Mechanicus Standard Grey over some parts of his trousers. followed by a little bit of administratum grey just to fix up the highlights There we go. Okay, so I've mixed a little bit of um, Blade One Flesh, Rockhearth Flesh, and Mechanica Standard Great into a small amount of Screamer Pink, which has given me a color like that. I'm just going to use this to just try and pick out his lip on the model. I'm going to be doing this by just bringing my brush to a point, a very small amount of paint on, and just kind of touching it against his lip. And if I'm honest, I think it's a little bit too subtle, so I'm going to mix a bit more screen of pink in. That's such a small area, it kind of needs decent saturation in order to actually stand out. It's different. enough of that. And what's visible there is his tongue and his uh, upper row of teeth. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to get a little bit of black paint and I'm going to paint that into the mouth cavity first. So 
So I'm getting all of his teeth. And the inside of his mouth. With the black. Trying to leave the tongue if I can. Ever so slightly. I'm just gonna get some rack off flesh and cover that up. That looks right to me. Get some screamer pink. I'm just going to try and pick out his whole tongue, which is not easy. see it that well there. I'm going to use the lip colour to highlight it. A little bit of white paint. Try and get his teeth. So make sure I can get I've got control over this. Yep. I just need to try and get that upper row of teeth, which is going to be tricky. There we go. That's what we really need to do. For the guy's face, because he's got that big mask on over the top. So what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna paint everything that's not gonna be wood, 
or a bright color. So uh, these two wires here on top are going to be a bright color. This is wood, as is this bit back here. And everything else is going to get painted black. So I'll just come back after doing that because that's not particularly interesting. Okay, with all of the uh, black and metal parts back to being black, I just realized I forgot to paint the scarring in. So I'm just going to take a bit of Rakar flesh, pop the palette, add a tiny touch of Screamer pink to it, and a little touch of Flayed One flesh. which is similar to the lip color. And I'm just gonna carefully paint all of the scars with this. Or at least as many as I can find. So just like that, <clears throat> I'm also going to take some Scream Pink, thin it down a lot into essentially a wash consistency, wipe off most of it. And I'm just going to kind of glaze this around the scar areas as well. Particularly on the undersides. Repeat that across all of the scars on the model, and then we'll come back. Okay, I'm going to paint a yellow stripe using some thin down Avalon Sunset around the top of his leg here. Now, it's always best when you're doing something like this to start with a thinner line and then build it out. So I'm just going to get my guideline down, and then I'll start widening it out to each side. So, so that's my guideline, and then I'm going to thicken it out a little bit. I'm going to paint another one on the other side and one round the bottom of the legs as well. Basically like the box art. Okay, there's our four lines. Um, if you make any mistakes, just use some mechanical standard grey to tidy them up. I am actually going to paint the Inquisition symbolized leg I've decided. Might as well try and push myself. So the way I'm going to work this, I'm just going to start with a tiny box and then build it out bigger. So, I want this to be just slightly above his knee. So, gonna okay. 
start off small. And just build it out to where I think it looks about right. So uh, that's the box. I'll tidy up the highlights at the end during touch-ups. Now I need to paint the Inquisition symbol inside of it. I'm just going to use some Mech Standard Grey. And I'm going to start just by drawing a line down the middle of that box that we did, leaving a space at the top and bottom. There we go, that's our Inquisition symbol painted on his knee. I'm now going to use a little bit of Flash Gets Yellow just to highlight some of these yellow parts. There we go. So next up I'm going to be painting the wires and most of the non-metallic stuff. So I'm going to have a red wire, yellow wire, and the rest of the wires back here are just going to be done in tones of grey, using the Mechanica standard grey and the Venstratum grey that we already have in our palette. And I'm going to paint these wood parts. Now the wood parts are really easy. We've already got them painted um, basically with overspray, so it's in a kind of flesh tone. That's not really important, as long as it's a light colour. If it's not a light colour, just base coat them with lacquer flesh. And I'm going to be using Contrast Wild Wood. I'm just going to use it straight from the pot over each of those wood areas. Uh, it's basically wood in a pot. It's really good for this kind of stuff. And this is the same method that I used to paint the wood panelling on the actual body of the Peniton engine itself. So just be careful where you're applying it. Fortunately where it's black it won't really show up very much. 
and just let it do its thing. While that's drying, I'll apply a base coat of Avalon Sunset to the yellow wire, a base coat of Mephiston Red to the red wire. Okay, that's the red and the yellow wire base coated. I've touched up all of the black areas as well while I was doing that. So if it looks impossibly neat, it's because I've touched it up, not because I am actually that neat. So next I'm going to highlight the yellow wire with Aerial Yellow and the red wire with Evil Sun Scarlet. Get that Aerial Yellow right on the tops here. I'm not that worried about the cable right at the back because that's going to be underneath the cowling of the penitent engine itself. And I'm just going to catch this bit here. Again, because of that lean forwards so that he's going to have. So that's the aerial yellow. I'm doing these both at the same time so that by the time one's done, the other one's dry. So I'm going to do another layer of each of those colors and then we'll move on to the next highlight. Okay, those are the Aerial Yellow and Evil Sun Scarlet highlights. Next I'm going to be doing a highlight with Flash Gets Yellow and Wild Rider Red. May take several coats to really get a good highlight with it. Just leaving a little bit of the Aerial Yellow visible and focusing it more towards the uppermost parts of the wire. And same for Wild Rider Red, although it's not quite as translucent as Flash Kit, so it shouldn't need as many layers. Okay, I'll do another couple of layers of that just to build up the intensity and we'll return for the final highlight. Okay, lastly I'm going to take Dawn Yellow, which is, uh, this is the edge paint version, which is slightly thicker. It's currently a layer version, which is slightly thinner, so you might need less of this, but I'm going to use Dawn Yellow straight as a highlight on the yellow, and I've mixed in about 50-50 Dawn Yellow to Wild Rider Red to create my highlight for the red cable. So first the yellow cable, and I'm just going to try and create a thin 
uh, specular highlight across the outside edge of the cable. Same with the Dawn Yellow Wild Wider Red mix for the red cable. And if it's a little bit thick, you can just touch it up with the previous colors. Okay, next I'm just going to paint the wires with Mechanica Standard Gray. I'm going to try and leave some of the black between each of the wires and the connectors. And then I'm going to highlight them up with Open Stratum Gray. That's the cables painted with Mechanica Standard Grey. Next, I'm just going to use Administratum Grey to give it a little bit of a highlight. So I'm just going to repeat that on the other side, and then we're done with the wires. There we go. That's all of the cables and wires painted. Next I'm going to give this a coat of satin varnish just to lock everything in and then I'm going to paint the metallic parts the same way that I did the rest of the penitent engine and then we're pretty much done. Okay I've done, painted all the metallics on the guy. Um, same methodology generally speaking as the rest of the penitent engine so refer back to part one for that and he's now glued in and the whole thing is glued together this is it it's done 